make sure we get all the bugs worked out this morning. Good to see everybody. Hopefully there's some more be jumping online here in a little bit. But uh, just welcome to Coffee and the Word this morning. Uh, it's 759. I know we're about a minute early, but just trying to uh, get stuff situated this morning. Uh, good to see a few jumping online already. Uh, but we'd like to welcome you to Coffee in the Word in the morning. Amen. In the morning. It could be in the evening, I guess, but it's in the morning. But Hopefully you got your coffee. Hopefully you got your word. <coughs> Excuse me. Tennessee allergies are working overtime this morning. and uh, But uh, it is good to see those that are jumping on board with us this morning. Uh, good morning, Chris Lane. See Misty Johnson out there already. Good deal. Uh, glad to see you guys. I always say it, and I hope you, if you ever go back and watch it, we always try to reiterate it. But without you all are what make this uh, open Bible study open happening uh, it's an open forum open discussion we do our best to read and see everybody's uh, comments uh, sometimes uh, I'm a little low-tech man in a high-tech world but uh, we try to do those so uh, hopefully everything's going good hopefully it sounds pretty good I know it was a little weak last week or the week before last uh, hopefully I may have fixed that but uh, may or may not but as you can tell, Brother Jerry's not with us this morning. He is not feeling well. He is under the weather, so be praying for him. Uh, so uh, hopefully he'll get back in the game. And uh, so uh, I always give him a hard time. I always tell him that. I always tell everybody here at Mount Bell he's laying out, but he's not really. But <laughs> I don't think they believe it. This just a fun pick of him. But uh, do remember him in prayer this morning uh, as he as as hopefully he continues to improve. So. Just a reminder of that. Um, also, don't forget we are in the midst of camp meeting revival. I'm telling you right now, if you have not been coming, you have been missing out. God has showed up in every service in a mighty and powerful way in this house from Sunday morning all the way up to uh, last night. We had a sister, uh, Mia Pittman Head, I think is her name, preached a phenomenal word and the day before that, the night before that, Brother Mike, Addison preached a great word, and Dr. Butler Sunday night, and we had Dr. Uh, Tony Ritchie Sunday morning, and it's been an awesome, awesome time in the Lord. The Lord's moving, the Lord's touching, the Lord's, I believe he's healing, he's delivering, he's setting the captive free, amen. Uh, tonight, don't forget tonight, it's at 7 o'clock, is with uh, our state bishop, administrative bishop, uh, Wayne Doherty, mine went blank, not like that. And then Thursday night is Anthony Wynn, and then Friday night is Tommy Bates. So if you missed it, you still got a few nights to jump in and become part of it. Maybe God is moving. Like I'm just that's all I I don't know how else to say it. He is flat out moving. And he is moving in a mighty, mighty powerful way. Amen. So let's Continue to remember the camp meeting. Also, this coming Sunday, August the 8th, we're celebrating the 102-year anniversary of Mount Vale being a church in this community established in 1919, I think, or something. Whatever 102 is, it's somewhere in that area. But uh, we're having homecoming, and with homecoming, and we're having eating. Amen. We're going to eat dinner on the grounds. Uh, the church is supplying the meat. We're asking any and all that come to bring a side dish and, and maybe a drink or a dessert or something of that nature. And uh, so let's come out and have a great time and celebrate 102 years that Mount Vale has been a shining light for the gospel of Jesus Christ in this community and in this area. Uh, that's a long time. It's a little older than Jerry. Jerry's not here and I'm still going to pick him. It's not much older, but it's a little older. But anyway, uh, let's remember those things. I know there's a few other events happening. I think the ladies are having a retreat end of August, but uh, money may have already been tuned. I don't know how, I can't remember all that. I don't have all the details on that, but if you got any questions, go to our church uh, center app, the event section, or website, or if you're a member here and you're here, you can check with Sister Shelley or, or Sister Norma, and uh, kind of find out all that, so all that information. I was making sure I wasn't missing anything, but uh, oh, August the 14th, I almost forgot. August the 14th, we're having our extravaganza, and uh, man, there's going to be a car show, there's going to be hillbilly concession, there's, 
<coughs> excuse me, there's going to be a, my goodness, blow ups, there's going to be food, there's going to be fun and games, man, it's going to be a great time, and, and they're getting together, I think, a pretty good car show, even if you don't like cars, just bring the family out, we're having a, it's more than that, there's going to be, I think there may be singing, there's going to be just all kinds of stuff to do, just a great end of summer extravaganza, I don't know if that's the right word for it, but, um, Man, y'all come out and be part of it. You got a car, you can sign up. Uh, I believe on the Church Center app. Is that right, Sister Melissa? I've seen her out there watching. Uh, if, if it's not, just uh, just let us know how they can sign up and register their cars for the show and, and, and all the other stuff that's going on. So this is going to be a great time. A whole lot of fun for the kids and family and friends. And just come on out and be part of it. It's just a, it's just a great, great thing. So uh, let's remember that. That's August the 14th. That's on a Saturday. I forget the times. Melissa, can you put the, if you're able to, put that information out there for them. And, uh, and uh, I remember what time it starts. And I don't have my thing here with me or my stuff before me. But, uh, oh, yes, and you can text CARS to 865-328-2008. You can register your car. Good deal. From 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. All right. Thank you, sister. Uh, so, so pass the word around, spread the word out, amen. Come on out and have a good time here at Mount Lill on August the 14th, so let's don't forget that. August the 8th, don't forget homecoming, and um, don't forget tonight's service, our third day, what, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, the fourth day, I guess, into the fourth, five, fifth service into the uh, camp meeting revival we've been having. The Lord has been moving mighty, my goodness. It's hard to explain if you ain't here. I tell people all the time, I said, you can watch people fish on TV and that's all fun, but it's a whole lot different when you're out there doing it yourself. And the same way with church, you can watch it all you can if you're, if you're able. If you're not able to get out, that's a, it's a blessing to be able to do that. But if you're able to get out, ain't nothing like being in the midst of it all. Amen. The old fella said you got to be in amongst it. <laughs> I don't know if that's a real word, but he made it up anyway. But let's remember that. Um, a few little prayer requests, and we will jump into our lesson this morning. Again, uh, don't forget Brother Jerry. He's sick, so be praying for him. That's the reason he's not here this morning. Uh, continue to remember our service tonight. And uh, remember uh, a lot of our family members and people that are traveling. Remember those that are getting ready for school. Remember our school children and teachers that are in some of the counties here near our county I live in, and I think maybe this county that the church sets in is getting ready to start this week. Uh, so remember them. Amen. There's so much going on, so much craziness seems like this world anymore. So really remember God's protection upon them and, and his heads around them. And so let's remember that. Let's remember the teachers also and any staff that works at the school systems. Remember them. Amen. Amen. So let's remember that. Uh, I was trying to think who else. I, I know there's somebody I'm missing. Uh, and I know getting, it's a good thing when you got two people, like especially as old as me and Jerry, as we kind of remember parts. He gets, you know what I mean, we can bounce it off each other. But I think Sister Deborah had posted about her daughter in law. Remember her. Uh, and there's a few others. Remember. Um, ah, my mind's went blank. If I miss you. Please don't, please don't get upset, but there's a few that we need, and, and if you got a prayer request, priest post it, it'll go to our prayer teams, um, and Sister Melissa can maybe help me there with some of the prayer things. Uh, don't forget, um, I'm trying to think, I was trying to see if I could pull up something that I had. There's Rachel Ann Smithers requested prayer for Seth Glover, remember him. Rachel, Ralph and Ray, Wanda Ray needed prayer for my brother's salvation. Uh, I'm getting some information now uh, from the last couple of days. Louis, Louis Mullinsbro, she needs prayer for delivery. Kim Nicely needed prayer for her dad. Uh, so let's remember those, uh, some of those that have come across on our prayer list and prayer things throughout the, uh, and if you're watching and you're not able to come to Mount Bell or you're just whatever, you can always send a prayer request in and we'll, it will get to our prayer teams and, and all that. So uh, remember all those. Uh, and uh, remember, uh, remember our country, remember our leaders in this country, our representatives in this country. Uh, remember what's going on with this new spike in COVID, I guess, if it's 
whatever it is, uh, just remember those who are, who are dealing with all that. And remember Sister Sharon Lane, she's, she's under the weather a little bit. Um, remember Tim Welch's mother. I'm trying to think in my mind. It's hard. You can see. I'm sure y'all can see the smoke and the gears turning and all that. When I'm trying to think, but let's remember all those. And if you got a prayer request, like I said, just post it, and uh, we will do our best to get into it. So let's pray. Let's jump into the Word this morning into a, a new little series we're going to hit on and try to work through. So, uh, so let's pray. Father, we come to you today, God, giving you thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your mercy and your grace and your loving kindness, Lord. We thank you for all that you do here at Mount Vale, Father God. We thank you for the revival at camp meeting this week, God. <coughs> excuse me. We thank you for the lives that were touched and changed, God. And Lord, we're asking, <coughs> excuse me, we're asking you to move upon every request, God. Those that were given, those that were unspoken, God. Those that are watching, God, you know their needs today, Father God. Lord, we're asking you to move like never before, Father God. Save, sanctify, fill with the Holy Ghost, heal, deliver, strengthen, encourage, and set free, Father Lord. Lord, bring comfort and peace to those who need comfort and peace, Father Lord. And God, I pray right now that you move upon our service tonight, God. Let the anointing of God continue to flow in this house and the Spirit of God begin to go forth, Father Lord. And Lord, we ask you right now, God, to continue to move in camp meeting, God, this week, Father Lord. And do mighty acts and mighty wonders and mighty miracles in the place, Father Lord. And Lord, Come to you, God, asking you, God, to, to move in this class, move in this lesson, God. God, help us, anoint us, God. God, with fresh oil, fresh fire, fresh anointing, fresh revelation today, Father Lord. And God, we pray right now that you anoint our hearts, our minds, our souls. God, anoint our lips of clay. God, speak to us and through us, not of the wisdom of men, but divine power and revelation of the Holy Ghost today, Father Lord. And God, we're praying right now, God, move upon Jerry, touch his body, Father God, heal him, top of his head to the soles of his feet, Father Lord. God, we pray right now, God. And God, we're asking you to move like never before, God, upon this class and upon this lessons, Father Lord. And God, we're asking you, God, most important, your will and your way be done in this lesson today, Father God. And we ask it right now by the power, by the authority, by the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody say it, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We, uh, Ended up with our topic last week, or a topic we worked on for a few weeks was uh, how to use your sword. And this week, uh, Jerry had brought up an interesting topic, and I was, it's it's interesting. It'd be better. I don't say it'd be better, but it's easier sometimes when when we're two of us are together with these kind of topics. But he uh, brought up a, a topic about denominations and and, and and things of that nature. And will one denomination go to heaven and the other won't? And we had going to throughout this little series talk about what we believe as a church is what the church of God believes and, and it's uh, the church of God calls it their declaration of faith and, and hopefully it'll be informative to you and hopefully it won't be too too redundant in itself but denominations are here and out throughout our country throughout our world and I just want to use one little scripture because I think it's important that we understand some things because before we dev into it too much but 2 Timothy 3 and 16, if you got your Bibles and you want to turn there, I'm going to give you a few minutes to go there because, and, and talk about denominations just for a little bit um, before we read. The word denomination is, is, is what is a definition of it is, is a recognized and autonomous branch of the Christian church. We see in, in our country and, and in the world that there's a lot of denominations and, and, uh, and a lot of different views on many things of what the Bible says. And we see that we understand that there is a lot of different denominations throughout this country. And, and I had a statistic and I was trying to find it. There is over, there is estimated around 30 to 41,000 denominations throughout the world and almost 30,000 or so in just in our own country. We, uh, we see it from the Catholics. We, there's Catholics, there's, there's, uh, this is just Christian denominations. There's Presbyterian, there's Methodist, there's Pentecostals. And even inside the Pentecostals, there's church of God, church of God of prophecy, assemblies of God, four square, 
and just to name a few, and then you, like I said, you got Methodists, you got Presbyterians, you got Nazarenes, you got uh, it's just so many, and, 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 and the list goes on. And we couldn't name them all, but uh, there is a is is a fallible difference, or, or there's differences, and some of the differences are so minute, if you will, that separates these denominations from what they believe. And uh, but the scripture here, just as I was going to read before we get too far into that part of it. Is 2 Timothy 3 and 16, a very famous passage of Scripture. It talks about the Bible. It talks about Scriptures. It says this, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. We've got to understand that every Scripture that is written in the Bible, we talked about that through that little series we just come out of, is given by God. It's inspired, it says. In the, and if it trans, one of the translations in that word says it's God breathed. God, this is God's Word. He gave it to man to write, and man wrote it. But it's coming from God. In all scriptures, from Genesis to Revelation, is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I want to talk a little bit about doctrine because that's where denominations come to separate. That's where denominations come out of, I guess, is the doctrines. But I want you to understand something. When you hear the word doctrine, <coughs> excuse me, I got a cough this morning. When you hear the word doctrine, a lot of time people shun away from that because there's so much, uh, is the word stigmatism to doctrine. Sometimes you, well, that's the doctrine and that's their doctrine and this is our doctrine. And, but I want you to understand you've got to have some solid doctrine. You need to have some sound doctrine in your life. You can't go just with the wind tossed or the waves tossed. And things. You've got to have some sound doctrine. For instance, sound doctrine deals with you, you got to know that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. That's sound doctrine. You got to know that he was born of a virgin. That's sound doctrine. You see what I'm saying? You got to understand and know he died and was buried and on the third day come up out of the grave and now sits at the right hand of the Father. That is some sound doctrine you need to stand upon and never waver from and never move from. So doctrine is not a bad word. I know a lot of times it's almost used in, in some of these interdenominational or non-denominational churches about well, their doctrine was this and their doctrine was that. But I come out to tell you, you've got to have some sound doctrine in your life. And, and the Bible teaches us. It says it right here. It's profitable for doctrine. These scriptures are profitable for things we need to stand upon and need to stand with. And denominations separate themselves a lot of times based on doctrine, based on their different beliefs and based on the different ways that they look at things and the, and the different things that they interpret from the scripture sometimes. Hold up here real quick. And uh, that didn't work. <laughs> but there's so many different denominations and like I said they're estimating there's over 30 to 41,000 denominations in in the country and in the world itself and uh, uh, there, there's a percentage of all that and, and I mean you got from Catholics and Eastern Catholic churches Eastern Orthodox Oriental Orthodox and Protestants and we're considered Protestants if you're not of the Catholic faith uh, anyway there's so many different even from that point of view and even like I said from from um, the point of view of denominations of GM, there's Baptists, there's anti-Baptists, there's, there's uh, and, and, then, and then when I said it earlier in Pentecostal, there's uh, there's Church of God, Church of God properly, Assembly of God, UPC, there's there's just to name a few, Four Square, I believe it is, and and there's so much uh, different things about denominations, and, and it's one of the questions that, that I want us to look at, and we're going to get to in just a minute, but I want us to get a hold of this about sound doctrines. I want us to get a hold of that to understand that there is a truth to the doctrines of the Word of God. There's things you've got to have that you've got to stand upon. You have to get a hold of that and understand that we have to and uh, how that we have to get a hold of this and understand that there's some good sound doctrine you we need to stand upon. Because if we don't, then we fall. There used to be an old country song, a western song, and I hate to give my, some things away, but uh, we, uh, 
if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. So in turn, we look at, at, at the denominations throughout the country and throughout the world, and you know, there's, there's so many different ones. Like I said, I know there's Baptists, and within the Baptists, there's different denominations, if you think about it. You got free will, you got missionary, you got old path, you got all kinds, Southern Baptist, just to name a few that I know of. And the Methodist, there's a couple of Methodist denominations, Presbyterian, there's a couple, there's the Cumberland Presbyterian and the Presbyterian Church in Canada, there's there's the Orthodox churches, there's the Episcopal churches, there's Catholic churches, there's Lutherans, there's the Reformed, and then you got the Spirit Field, which is Pentecostal. We talked about that. There's a number of those that are in there, and and then then you got the Apostolics. You got the there's so many you know, the Wesleyans and Seven Day Adventists and 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 all kinds of and then you've got uh, the non-denominationals, if you will. You've heard that terminology. They're not affiliated, even though they follow a lot of the same doctrine. They're not affiliated, and you got interdenominationals, and there's so much in that word denomination. Almost, uh, almost, we wonder why. We wonder why we have such a division sometimes within the body itself. But it's, it's, it's sometimes it's the views of things and the way we see things as men in the world. But the main thing, and one of the questions that Jerry had brought up about this is, and I think it's interesting that he said it was, and and let me say this: a lot of denominations used to teach this. But he said, he asked, he said, would, if you don't belong to a certain denomination, will it keep you out of heaven? Will you not make it to heaven? I don't think denominations determine if you go to heaven. I think the belief system sometimes in the denominations determine whether you're going to go to heaven, but not necessarily the, the, the uh, denomination itself. I don't think you have to belong to the church of God to get to heaven. I don't think you have to belong to a Baptist church to get to heaven. I don't think you have to belong to a Catholic church to get to heaven. I don't think you have to belong to a four square or, or, or Nazarene or Episcopal churches to get to heaven, Presbyterian or Methodist to get to heaven. The Bible only tells us one thing, it really basically in general, that how it takes to get to heaven. He said, he said, except a man be born again, you got to be born again. You got to have your sins washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. You got to uh, accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, believe he died and buried and rose on the third day. You've got to uh, live a life that is exemplary before him, I believe, and through that changed person that you are. I don't think you can live in sin and make it to heaven. We've talked about that before. We've showed the scriptures about that before. You can't live a sinful lifestyle and make it to heaven. You must be born again and follow after Jesus. And those who follow after me is going to make it. And, uh, and, and the key is, is that doesn't matter which denomination you belong to. If you're a Baptist, that's fine. If you're a church of God, that's fine. If you're in between somewhere, that's fine. As long as your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life and you're living a life that Christ has called you to live, then I believe you're going to make it to heaven. I believe that's all the Bible says. That's all that ever, it says repent of your sins, which means to turn away from. And, and that's the only thing that really keeps you or gets you into heaven and keeps you out of hell is that you've been born again. That's what he told Nicodemus. He said, you got to be reborn, rebirthed spiritually, not physically, but spiritually. And, uh, and and from that moment on, you should follow him and serve him. A lot of times we uh, we get off on this little uh, thing that he's the Savior and he's also he's he is our Savior. Don't get me wrong. But he's also should be Lord of your life. And when he becomes Lord of your life, you follow his statutes. You follow his commandments. You don't live in a sinful lifestyle because in Galatians and Corinthians it tells us time and time again it gives short list of things and, and and Paul tells them once he's told them twice he said I've told you once told you twice he said these will not inherit the kingdom of heaven and that's a whole different topic in itself but denominations are are interesting in themselves and I, I say it a lot of times a, a lot of a lot of denominations or denominationals because of just usually some few little things here or there that separates them and their doctrine from some other church or some other denomination. The Baptists are separated by the Methodists just by a few things, and we're separated by Baptists and Methodists just by a few different uh, beliefs that we have that the Bible teaches and, 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 and so on. But you run into that, and that's where the denominations really come into play, and they've, they've been happening for a long time. And uh, different things. I mean, you can even see over into the New Testament that they weren't denominations, but sometimes they had different views and different ideas because they were men of how things happened. And there used to be an old joke uh, about a, they found this man on a desert island, lived there for years, and finally found him. And uh, 
he was showing them around and what he had built. He said, well, there's the first place I lived in. And it was a little lean-to, if you will. And he said, as I moved up, I, I built that house and I built that house. And he said, that's my home right now. And it, and, and, and it was populated. He said, and that's where I would go hang out and fish. And he had a little fishing hut. And then he said, one fellow says, what's them two buildings up on the hill there? He said, well, that first one up there is the first church I went to. And the second one's the second one I went to. And he was the only one on the island. He said, I left that church because they wasn't doing what I wanted them to do and built me another church. And he was the only one there. And uh, it's, it's this man sometimes does things out of his own self sometimes. But I believe that the Word of God teaches us a lot of good sound doctrine. And I think if we're not careful, I, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned as I begin to think about this and, and study some of this, is that as the church in America is happening and as the church in America is moving into some different directions, it seems like that we are losing the sound doctrine of the Word of God. We're losing the sound doctrine that's, that we're to stand upon because if you don't have some good sound doctrine in either denomination you belong to, you've got to have some good sound doctrine because if we don't, then we're not, then you're going to fall for anything and you're going to believe anything and you're going to allow the culture to dictate to you instead of us dictating to the culture. We, we too many times we see it in our, in our, in our country today. We see it in the, uh, in the, uh, in our country in itself and in the churches today. And we see how things are beginning to progress and how things are digressing, if you will, sometimes and some things that we used to stand for. There's churches today, we all stood side by side, arm in arm against some things because it was in the Bible, but we see that some churches are wavering off of that. And, and it's some of, I believe, the end time, the, the falling away part of the scripture. But I, I think about that, and, and I'm trying to move into this, and I know it seems like we're just trying to get here, but I want to lay some foundation. But I think the key to a lot of the reasons that people or churches are falling by the wayside is they're losing the sound doctrine of the word. They're not sticking to what the word says. They're interpreting it to their own selves in itself or into the situation. And they're allowing the culture to dictate to them instead of us being the shining light that the church is supposed to be and the rock that's supposed to be solid. But we see that in, 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 in happening. And I think a lot of it is, is the end time uh, prophecies that are coming before us right now. We see that the Bible talks about a great outpouring of his spirit. And almost at the same time, it talks about a great falling away. And I used to think that the, the church houses were going to be empty, but I'm not so sure it's that. I think that sometimes the main thing is they're going to be falling away from the true faith and the true doctrine of God. Church houses could be full, but if they're just teaching you things that, that itches your ears and tickles your ears and make you feel good, send you on your way and don't tell you the truth, then they're failing in what the church is supposed to be. Jerry's asked, should a person stay with the denomination and try to help its people if its leaders turn from sound doctrine? That's a good question. Uh, oh, that's a good question. Uh, here's my thought. It depends on how well you uh, are entwined with the leadership, I guess. You have influence in that area. But I would say uh, if it gets too far out, I would say no. Uh, you know, it depends on less... Let, let me just say it this way, and I don't know how else to say it and compare it, but, well, we could do a few things that way, I guess. We don't really have to go to that. But we, uh, if they're falling away, let, let's use this for an example. If they stand up and say, Jesus wasn't born of a virgin, I think you need to get out. Unless you have some influence in its leadership, you need to get out. Because that's, that's, that's almost heresy in itself. And uh, I know Jerry wrote something else there, and I can't ever pull the rest of that up when I'm on here. Let's see if I can down here. But uh, I think that's a good question. Because I, I don't know. that, that I, Let me say it this way. You need to pray. If you think you can do some help, if you think you can help the people, if you think you can get the leadership to to adhere to or to change their their, their things in that nature or point of view from that thing, then I think you uh, you could stay and probably should stay. Uh, but in itself, um, I'm trying to get it here. I might have it. Yeah, we've seen it in another denomination, and it is splitting them. Absolutely. Yeah, you're talking about the uh, the. Well, let's just say it, it's the Methodists. They're having. I believe it's the Methodists. Is that who you're talking about? The Methodists. 
I think you, uh, I, I don't know that if you can't, let me say this, if you, you might can stay, you need to pray. But the big thing is if you can't, if you don't have the influence or don't have it, then I think you need to get out. If, if the church of God began to teach that Jesus is not the only way to heaven, I'm out. If he begins to teach it that there's other ways to get to heaven, I'm out. Because I don't have that as far as a whole denomination. Now, the, whole, the church that we're here today in, and, and I believe our pastor too, we would be out. We would just move on and go do something else. But start some start somewhere new and afresh, I guess. Yes, okay, Jerry put yes. And uh, so, you know, we, we see that. But I think if you're in a church and it begins to stray away from sound doctrine, if you're able to help the people or if you have influence in the leadership to turn back to that sound doctrine, then you might could stay. But I think you need to pray, most importantly, see what God wants you to do. And second, I, you need to get out because, I mean, there's just, uh, there's, you know, you can't stay in that mess in itself. And, and this, this denomination we're talking about, they're almost going to split eventually. It, it looks that way because of the issue that's, it's not that issues that we've talked about, but because of the issue that is before that church and before that body. And uh, it's sad to say that people do stray from sound doctrine. There's a lot of sound doctrine that we have to hold on to. There's some things that we can we can we can discuss and not be eye to eye on, but there's a lot of stuff that cannot be moved. Cannot be moved. You got to be born again. Jesus is the I, 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 the Church of God is to kind of get into some of where we're headed. The Church of God is uh, any comments, any suggestions, questions out there. I, I feel like I'm talking and I talk a lot, so you got to jump in there and throw some questions out there to slow me down. Uh, the Church of God established in its early infancy, I guess, as a denomination a, in some of their assemblies, the first few assemblies, I don't know which number it is or exactly what year it was set up, but they call it the Declaration of Faith. It's some sound doctrine. It's what they believe. It's what they wholeheartedly are not wavering on. You're standing upon this and that's it. And there were 14 of them that they, that they uh, adhered to. I don't say come up with, but it's 14 that they did set in place to be sound doctrine that the church of God does not waver off of and or should not or is not supposed to in itself but they uh, it's um, it's and, and it's very it's very fundamental I think it's very very fundamental Sister Misty wrote the Bible tells us to not give any place to the devil I would think you would possibly open a door to getting confused absolutely right i believe you're right sister i believe you're right on that and that she's talking about staying in that in that denomination if it was not adhering to the sound doctrine and to move on and i think you're absolutely right it can cause confusion it can uh, cause you to be confused it, and, and here's the thing is that's why we say it's so 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 very 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 important to read your bible to know your word because man is man and man is fallible let's just be real we're fallible we and some good men are fallible and uh, I think it's important that you get a hold of that and we understand that today and that's a good point you're right it could cause confusion if you stay there too long you can't move from the sound doctrine of the Word of God because when you start moving from it then you're, you're on a slippery slope <laughs> amen you're on a slippery slope I can't see the more. I hate that. <laughs> you know, it says see more, and I thought I, I got it pulled up down here once. I can't pull it back up down here again for whatever reason. But um, anyway, but sound doctrine is so very important in our lives, and, and, and we're going to discuss some of the declarations of faith. Uh, we may start some today and move into the next few weeks uh, with that in the Church of God because. I think it's so very important that we know, and, and maybe it's, and, and let me say this, even if you don't belong to the church of God, this is some sound doctrine every Christian should not move from. I like what Sister Misty said, you give the devil a foothold, don't give him an opportunity, don't give him a place. If you're going to a church that teaches contrary to the word of God, I'm, I'm, I'm wholeheartedly say you get out. Get out, find you one that teaches Jesus Christ to him. Him as Savior and Lord of your life, rightly dividing the word of the living God. Get you a Bible-based church. Get you a place where you need to belong that teaches the true doctrines of, of Christ and, and the gospels of Christ. And like I said, there is some areas that are 
that we can just, uh, I won't say argue on or not really have to stand solid on, but there is some things that have to be stand, we have to stand solid on. The question that started this little conversation was, does it matter what denomination we belong to? It does not, as long as they adhere to the teachings of the Word of God. Amen. It does not matter. There's, let me say this. There's going to be people in heaven from different denominations because they were faithful to God. They were faithful to Jesus. They were born again, and they were faithful to his word. I believe that with everything I got. There's not going to be just the Baptists up there. There's not going to be just the Church of God up there. There's not going to be just the, the Presbyterians up there. There's going to be some good men and women, good, faithful Christians from denominations that will follow after God. Amen. And they'll be there. The Bible says there's going to be a lot of people there if you look at it. He said every kindred, tongue, nations, revelation said they're going to be up there singing. He said, number he couldn't number. It's going to be up there praising the Lord. Amen. I go back to Sister Missy there. Uh, you can't give the devil a foothold. I said it earlier. I said you got to stand for some things and you're, you'll fall for anything. And if you don't have, if you're not rooted in this sound doctrine, and you're not rooted in the word of the living God, I'm telling you right now, interdenominationals, non-denominationals, they have doctrines. Doctrines are basically the beliefs that you believe and stand upon solid and say, we're not moving, we're not wavering from that, we're not changing anything from that. And we're not changing. Amen. Amen. The Church of God has a, as I said earlier, they have a thing they call the Declaration of Faith, and it's what we believe, basically. And if you've ever been here when Pastor takes in members, he goes through that list. And if you've ever been here, we go through that with you before you join the church, because I think it's so important. You need to know what you're joining. You need to know what you're belonging to and what your beliefs and what they believe. You know what I mean? You, I think you always need to know that. And if you go to church that doesn't tell you their beliefs before you join, you ought to question that because you need to know what you're hooking up to, joining up to. You're like what she said, you could open a door for confusion, get confused. So you join thinking, well, hey, I, I knew a lady one time. She claimed to be a part of a denomination, and she didn't even know what they really believed. She, her mother and father had been there, and her grandparents had been there, but she didn't have a clue. She just rolled into it. Just She was born into it, stayed in it, and didn't really know the true beliefs of what she was even belonging to. But the essence that we believe, she said, well, I don't know. They didn't know. She'd never been taught. And I think it's important that we teach it. And, and it may be some of what we do through that, this little series. And but in, and, and I think we will. We, we got 14 points, and it's not going to take 14 weeks because some of these are very uh, solid, very, I won't say simplistic, but very to the point of what we believe. And the first declaration of faith that the Church of God has is, is that we believe in the verbal inspiration of the Bible. We've been talking about that for weeks now, I guess, that, that God breathed this word. Even the scripture of 2 Timothy 3 and 16, we pulled it. it was God inspired this word. All scripture from the beginning to the end, from Genesis to Revelations, is inspired by God. And that we believe that it's a verbal inspiration from God. We believe that God verbally in the spirit talked to these men. God breathed this word upon them and they penned it. Amen. We believe in the verbal inspiration of the Bible. That's some sound doctrine. You got to believe in the Bible. You've got to believe that this word is the true word of the living God. You've got to hold on to this is some sound doctrine. This is some sound doctrine. You've got to understand that it's infallible, it's unchangeable, and it's, and it's from God himself. This is God speaking to man. So that is some good sound doctrine. We also believe in one God, eternal, existing in three persons, namely the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We at the Church of God believe in the Trinity. We know some that don't. We know some are Jesus only and, and that thing. And some of that can, can is some is some good doctrine, and some of that I'm, I'm not delving too deep into that. But the Bible teaches us, and throughout what we feel pull from that, that there's a three. It's you say, well, how there's three gods? We're not no. There's just one God. It's the three persons, if you will. Even our bodies, we have a, a, a the our our what it, there's three parts to us, if you will. We got our we got our flesh, spirit, and soul. And uh, so we, we see that. We see that. And you say, where do you get that about that? Just a quick reference to the Trinity is that when Jesus was baptized, John the Baptist baptized him in the river. He's the son of God in flesh. Baptized him. He says, then the Holy Spirit, which is the second part of the Trinity, if you will, or the third part of the Trinity, descended upon him. And then his father, which is God, the first part, if you will, or the first person, 
spoke and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So you see the three part persons right there of the Trinity of God and say, well, I don't know if I believe that's okay. The fact of the matter is you got to understand Jesus Christ is the son of the living God and he's the only way you can get to heaven. Amen. It's through his blood. Uh, number three, we believe that Jesus Christ is the holy, the only begotten son of the father. Jesus does not have a brother. There is one denomination that teaches us that there, he had a brother. He does not have the brother. There's but one son, and that is Jesus Christ of the Father. He was conceived of the Holy Ghost when the Holy Spirit came upon uh, Mary, and he was born of a virgin Mary. I said it earlier. There's some people in some churches today that are trying to uh, wash that out and say she was not really a virgin. It was a different terminology, and it was a different state. But I come by to tell you, she was a virgin. The Bible teaches us. That's some sound doctrine right here that Jesus Christ is the only begotten son and that he was conceived of the Holy Ghost and he was born of a virgin Mary. As Christians, we cannot move off that point. And that Jesus was crucified. How many know and understand that? He did die on that cross. He did not swoon. He did not go into a coma. He died and he was crucified. And he was buried and he raised on from the third, from the dead. Well, this is some so solid of a sound doctrine. There's so much in this little number three, if you will, of the Declaration of Faith that is such sound doctrine. If anybody wavers off of it, if you go to a church and they start teaching something contrary to these things, I encourage you to move on. Jerry made a good comment. Should you stay and help them? If they help its leaders turn from if you if you got that influence, that's good. If you ain't, then you, like Sister Misty said, you need to move on. Ida says that the Bible says the blood of Jesus is the only way to get to heaven. All the rest of the word is to know how to live as Christians. She's right. That's right. Just to stop right there and get her, her point is it's right. The only way to get to heaven is through the blood of Jesus Christ. And the rest is how we should live as Christians. The word teaches us and, and admonishes us how. That's what I said. It's for sound doctrine. It's for reproof. It's correction. It's so that man will be made perfect. That's what it said. 2, Corinthians, 2 Timothy 3 and 17. So we're seeing some sound doctrine in this declaration of faith. And there's a lot of denominations that believe all this. There's a lot of denominations that believe all this and hold true to this. And we see it throughout their, their own uh, beliefs or statements of faith, if you will. Some of them call them a statement of faith. Some of them call them uh, denominations and things of that made thing. But the thing about it is we understand that there is some sound doctrine that churches do, should not, and should never, Christians should never waver from. Amen. Because if we ever do, then we're in trouble. If we ever do, we're in trouble. I like. Uh, I was able to pull up the rest of Misty's statement. It said that about that you possibly open the door and getting confused, or your family going and sitting under wrong teachings. The word is the truth and not man-made teaching. Absolutely. If it don't line up with the word, then don't mess with it. It's that simple. If it don't line up with the word, don't mess with it. Uh, Sister Ida's thing was it is to know how to live as Christians and to pray for discernment. You're absolutely right, and we've got to understand that sometimes. I believe we we miss that in itself. Um, when we do it, but this is some sound doctrine. We got to believe he, he died and was buried and rose on the third day. Amen. You, we've got to believe that. That is some sound doctrine that we cannot waver off of. Hear me today. If you're watching or watch this later, Jesus Christ is the only way to get to heaven. We believe that he ascended to heaven. And is today at the right hand of the Father, and as he intercedes for me and for you. Number four of the Declaration of Faith. We, like I said, we probably won't get, we might get through most of them today. We believe that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that repentance is commanded of God for all and necessity for forgiveness of sins. We know and understand and believe that we've all sinned. Romans, I believe it's 6 and 23, said we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. 
we know and understand we were all born into sinners. What that means is, is you've got to have a savior. What that means is you can't get to heaven on your own merits. You can't get to heaven on your own lifestyle because we were all born into sin. Romans, I believe five and 12 or five, is it five and 12 says that through death, sin entered in through one man. It was talking about Adam and, Adam and that sin and death was passed upon all mankind. And there was another man who came named Jesus where it could be washed away. But the fact of the matter is, we, that, that's one of the first things of becoming a Christian is to understand you, you've fallen short to the glory of God, that you're lost, that you're a sinner. And we believe that repentance, and repentance is important. Repentance is the means to turn away from, is a command of God for all and necessary for forgiveness of your sins. We, we ask Jesus to forgive us of our sins, if you will, and wash them clean by the blood he shed on Calvary. And the Bible teaches us to repent. And repent means to turn away from. It's almost like you're going one direction, you flip a 180 and you go back. Repenting is, a, is something that is a necessity for Christians. We're to walk away from that sin. And almost in, in itself, is we're, we're not to live in that sin no more. We're not to, let's say if you was a, a dope dealer, well, you don't get saved one Sunday and go back and dealing dope the next Monday. It don't work like that. The Bible, that's re turning from that sin. That's repentance. You're repenting. You're sorry. You're, you're even past sorry for what you're done, but you're, you're turning away from that sin. And it takes the power of God to do that, living in your life. And sometimes it's a struggle. Sometimes it's a challenge. And that's part of sanctification. And that's a whole different uh, uh, thing, which is next in there. Sanctification may be something we need. Maybe a subject we ought to teach on one day is sanctification and, and really drive in what that means. That's the means to be set apart. But uh, we see that we've all sinned, so repentance is necessary. Turn away from that sin. Walk away from that lifestyle. The Bible says you became a new creature and a new creation through Jesus Christ, and you need to walk away from that in itself. Uh, number five says that the justification, regeneration, and the new birth were wrought by the faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Those are some biblical terms and Christian terms, if you will, justification and regeneration and the new birth. But we believe all that comes through that, you being saved, you being justified, you being regenerated, the new birth all comes through the faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. That is some sound doctrine. We never leave that Jesus Christ and his blood is the only way you're going to be justified. It's the only way you're going to be sanctified. It's the only way you're going to be born again. It's the only way you're going to be regenerated. And, and, and we may talk some more in depth about some of this and as, we, as we move on maybe next week because or into the next few topics. These may be some good topics to talk about what some of those terminologies mean. Uh, justification, just to give you a real brief thing, it's a very simple uh, uh, thing for justification is, is that it's just as if I've never sinned. You've been washed, you've got a new slate, slate. you got a new chalkboard, you got a new, uh, uh, your hard drive doesn't been wiped out and it's all fresh and new, whatever you want to add to it. Yeah, Jerry's wondering where I got that thought about computers, didn't you? Yeah, I watch TV every once in a while. <laughs> but we see it. But it's through Jesus Christ and the blood that, that we're able to do that. And we also believe in the sanctification, which it means to be set apart, means to be uh, clean, if you will, subsequent to the new birth through the faith and the blood of Christ, through the word and by the Holy Spirit. We're sanctified by the blood of Christ. We're sanctified by the word. Jesus himself prayed. He said he was praying for his disciples. He said, Lord, sanctify them with the truth, which is the word. You're sanctified. And sanctified means how you're living. You learn to live for Christ. You learn to be Christ-like. Uh, I, I, like I like an example, and I've used a 100,000 times in this. Uh, as, he, he, as we learn the word of God and as we read and as the Holy Spirit begins to move in our lives and begins to show us things we ought to change and begin to show us things that are not quite right in our hearts and in our lives. Through that, through the word, through the blood of Christ, then we become sanctified. We become set apart. We become clean, if you will, in itself as we progress. That's the sanctification is such a big thing. I, maybe our next topic, Jerry, is sanctification. We may talk about that a little bit more in depth. But we believe in that. We believe it all comes through Jesus, the word, and the Holy Spirit working in our lives to make us more Christ-like. Uh, the example I was going to use was a, was a guy, and he was an ex-biker, outlaw kind of guy, and he was rough as rough could be and mean as a rattlesnake and twice as bad, I reckon. And uh, after he got saved, and he never knew anything about the Bible, never knew anything, never read it, I don't guess, never grew up in it. 
that if he did, he was a young child. But the fact of the matter is, he said, I ain't know nothing. And he said, he said I would uh, call my pastor up saying, hey, man, should I, can I do this? Should I do that? Should I do that? He said, I was wearing the man out. He said, I know I was. And uh, one day his pastor uh, gave him a piece of paper and said, could you see Jesus doing it? Whatever it is, he said, if you, if you come across that thought or that question, he said, could you see Jesus doing it? And he said, every time I had some issues, he said, I'd pull that out and think, could I see Jesus doing it? If I couldn't see Jesus doing it, then I shouldn't be doing it. And that's part of sanctification. And, and one time he was, he was at a revival. He hadn't been saved long, I don't think. And he was at a revival and he was, uh, the preacher was preaching on fornication. And if you know what fornication is, that's another church word, but, uh, or another King James word. It's, uh, sexual, uh, having sexual relationships outside of marriage. And, uh, he didn't know what that meant. He'd never heard of that. And he went up and asked the evangelist afterwards. And, and, and you know, the Bible teaches us that fornic fornicators will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's a sin. And the guy told him what it was. And he said, and I went home. And he said, there she was. And he'd been, he said, ma'am, he said, you got to go. He said, I ain't, and basically this is his words. He said, I ain't going to hell for nobody. He said, you got to go. And it changed his life. That's part of sanctification. It's the cleaning out process, if you will. Setting apart is what that means for the work of the Lord. And through the word and through the Holy Spirit and through the blood of Christ, we become sanctified. And we believe that a Christian should be sanctified. My wife posted something the other day. I wish I could pull it up. Uh, I don't know that I can. Uh, I'm not sure. Let me see if I can find it while we're doing this. And uh, But any comments, any questions out there? suggestions let me see I'm trying to find it because she read a word and it was real cool and she posted it as I'm getting there as some of you just tuned in and missed the first part of it don't forget our camp meet tonight our state bishop will be here Yeah, here it is. Shouldn't we be a fastidious in our Christian walk? And that word means to be very attentive to, concerned about accuracy and detail and very concerned about the matters of cleanliness. That's a word, y'all look it up. It's used 1 Corinthians 6 and 11. But it's right. We, we need to be in that sense of sanctification. And it's very important that, that but we believe it's through, the, through our new birth, through the faith and the in the blood of Christ and through the word and by the Holy Spirit working in us. Number seven in this, and I, I'm hoping, yeah, we probably won't get them all. Holiness. We believe in holiness to be God's standard for his, of living for his people. That separates some denominations. Not say they don't believe in holiness, but they believe sometimes you can do about anything you want make it. But the Bible teaches us, he tells us time and time again, that we're to be holy for he is holy. And, and we see it in itself and, and I think sometimes and we might go back through I'm, I'm running through these and we might go back through and break some of these down a little bit more in the next few weeks if y'all would like that uh, because I, I, I think I'm moving too fast for it but we wanted just to, to lay a foundation for itself uh, Luke 1 and 75 says, In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. We're to be holy. I believe it's in Peter. He says, Be you holy, for I am holy. For I am holy, so shall you be holy, or something of that nature. So holiness is important. It's, it's a holy living. We're to be separated from this world. We're not to live like this world. We're not to talk like this world. We're not to act like this world. We're not to dress like this world. We're not to, and I'm not saying you can't dress in fashion, but you have to dress modestly. Uh, the Bible teaches that time and time and time again. And, and we're to, to adhere to the teachings of the Bible. We're to, to be holy. Uh, holiness has a lot to do with our, how we, our reactions to people. Holiness has a lot to do with how we deal with people and treat people. Holiness is a broad spectrum in itself, but we're to live holy as Christ has lived holy. Because we're to be Christ-like. Amen. Anybody else got any questions, comments?
All right. Number eight, we believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost subsequent to a clean heart. We believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost in, in here. Now, that separates some denominations from us in itself. Uh, they, some denominations believe in a different way that you get the Holy Ghost. But we believe because the Bible teaches us that John told, uh, told him there, he said, there's one coming. He said, I baptize you in water. He said, there's one coming whose shoes I'm not even worthy to take off. Sandals, I ain't even worthy to unlatch. And he says, he's coming to baptize you with Holy Ghost and fire. We see on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, that they were all in one accord, 120 of them in the upper room. And it said, his sound come like a mighty rushing wind and filled the house. It said, cloven tongues of fire set upon them, and they began to speak in other tongues as the, as the Spirit gave the utterance. We believe in that, the baptism, but the baptism of the Holy Ghost has to come from a clean heart. You have to be born again. You have to be, you need to be sanctified. And then the Holy Ghost comes in and dwells and baptizes you, or Christ baptizes you in the Holy Ghost. We believe, number nine says, we believe in speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. And that is the initial evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We believe in that. We, that's some sound doctrine. And that doctrine there sometimes, or declaration of faith, separates some denominations from other denominations. And um, there you go, Sister Ida says, I believe if I'm not living a holy life, God cannot work through us. Man, that's good. Uh, I mean, that's, that's got a lot of truth to it, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we need to live holy lives for God to use us. We're, we're to be a clean vessel, his vessel. And not say we don't stumble sometimes, not say we don't have it all together sometimes. That's, that's not what we're saying. There's, you always repent and move up and grow up and learn. Amen. It's like the guy I was talking about. He realized what fornication was. He realized that that was a sin. And he said, I ain't living like that no more. And, and this man has a big, or did have, I haven't seen him in years, but I went and saw him at a conference. But he had a big ministry to help people on drugs and everything. Had a, had a big ministry. He probably still does, I'm assuming, if he's still here. He was an older gentleman then. But the fact of the matter is, is it to God to work through us, we do need to live holy as close to Christ as we can. That's a good point. I'm watching my time. I don't want to get too far into something and mess it up. Um, but we believe in speaking in tongues. We believe that this the initial evidence, if you will, of being baptized in the Holy Ghost is that throughout the scriptures you see that. You see that in Acts chapter 2. You see that in Acts chapter 10. You see that in Acts chapter 19, I believe it is, in and even a few more other passages of scripture, and those are the ones that just come to my head, that those who received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, their evidence was speaking in other tongues, another language. We have talked about the Holy Spirit in times past and, and the speaking in tongues and things, and you can go back and watch some of our uh, other episodes, I guess. I don't know if episodes or classes, if you will, lessons. I don't know what to call them. We do them online, and, and Jerry, Jerry always catches himself calling it a show, and he said, I know it's not a show. He said, but I don't know what else. He said, I just, it comes to my head, but episodes or other uh, series maybe, the other classes, maybe lessons, maybe lessons is what we ought to call it. But anyway, you can go back on Facebook and, and watch some of the archives if you haven't seen some of our uh, other stuff that we taught on. Uh, make trying to watch my time and not get too far into this i may walk run through it it may get them all in a way and then we may delve into them a little deeper next week well we also believe in water baptism by immersion and all who repent should be baptized in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost we believe in water baptism we believe that you're to be immersed we believe if you're a christian and you've been born again that according to the scriptures you ought to be baptized does baptism get you to heaven no but baptism is an outward expression of what's happened on the inside. The old man is dead. The new man coming into life. It's also a statement of faith in itself. And, and we don't think about it a lot of times like that here in America. But if you're in a foreign country, if you're in a communist country or an Islamic country or a, a country of that nature, that a Hindu that, that, that does not adhere to the teachings of Christ and almost and think about it, Islam and communists, if you confess and profess to be a Christian, it could cost you your life. And when you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, you are stating a fact that now I belong to him and I believe in him and I'm denouncing all of my other religious affiliations and it can cost you your own life. We've seen it when, when uh, uh, I can't remember, ISIS was in control and running rampant over there under the Obama administration. 
that we never heard a lot, but it was a lot of Christians died over there to the hands of Islam. And a lot of Christians are dying in Nigeria to the hands of Islam right now today. And there's a lot dying throughout the country due to communism in China and places like that and, and who are being imprisoned and jailed and tortured and, and punished and put to death because of Christ. So baptism is a very symbolic thing in itself, but it's also a statement of who you belong to. I know it's a, it's a representation of what's happened. And you say, well, I don't know. I don't know if I got to be baptized. Well, Jesus got baptized. He said it's a must-need thing. So if you're like him, let me, hear, let me say this. If you've been born again and you ain't been baptized, you ought to be baptized. Let me say this too to those who who who, were, who who rededicates their life to the Lord and you were baptized at one time. I've had this question a lot of times, and once you rededicate your life, they say, should you get rebaptized again? And I think you should, because the Bible says, do your first works over. And uh, so, if you've got away from God, you were you were you were saved, and you got away from God, and you and you were saved, and baptized, and you got away from God, you come back to God. I think it's good to get rebaptized. I've been baptized two or three times. I got baptized, uh, my wife and our pastor and his wife, we got to go to Israel uh, 2020, and uh, we got baptized in the River Jordan. I mean, man, that's a great thing. So there's nothing wrong with that. And I think you ought to sometimes to do your first works over. So we believe in water baptism. By immersion, we believe we, we believe you dunk them. Baptism, if you read the Bible, it says talks about baptism. It's the word baptisto in the Greek, I believe it is. And it means to immerse. So that's why we believe you're, you're immersing. I know some denominations sprinkle and some denominations do that, but we believe that, that you to be immersed and dunked, if you will. You in the South, we call it dunking. <laughs> but we believe you should be immersed. These are some sound doctrines of faith of the Church of God. This is the Church of God Declaration of Faith. This is, this is our denominational belief, if you will. And some of these things, like I said, there's some areas, and I hit on them a little bit, that separate us from other denominations because we believe in this and they believe in that. We believe divine healing is provided for all at the atonement. We believe God is still healing today and it was done at, at the atonement. The Bible said by his stripes we're healed. It's through the blood of Christ and through the stripes he bore, if you will, at the whipping post that we can be healed. We believe it's, it, it, it comes to that practice. It's not in any hands. It's not in any ritual per se, but God is still healing people. We see it. We've heard it just recently. We've seen people the Lord's touched and healed. We got people in our church that's been healed from cancer, and, 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 and all kinds of manner of things. Here at Mount Vale, before we started coming, I believe it was, they had a young lady that had a broke arm or something and had it in a cast. And the doctors looked and they were telling her all kinds of things. And she came up and got prayed for, and the swelling went down in that arm so much that the cast just slid off. They used to still have the cast over here. I'm assuming they probably do in the old side. But the fact of the matter is, God is still healing, and we believe that, that, that there is divine healing is provided through the atonement. We also believe in the Lord's Supper and washing of saints' feet. Some people don't want to wash feet, but the Bible teaches us to wash feet. The Lord's Supper is taking communion, if you will. Some people call it communion. It's, it's taking the, 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 the wine for his representation of his blood and the, the cracker for his body, and, and we believe that we as Christians ought to partake in that. We don't do it every Sunday. Some denominations do it every Sunday, and that's okay. Whatever you know, they want to do there, but they're doing what needs to be done. We also believe in washing the feet. Jesus washed all the disciples' feet. He said, you do this in remembrance of me. You do this like I've done it to each other. And uh, sometimes you don't have a big feet washing, but I'm telling you, if, you miss, if you've never been to a foot washing, you ought to go. God moves. There's something just precious about that humbling experience, if you will, in that. But we believe in that. We believe in the premillennial second coming of Christ. First, to resurrect us righteous dead and catch away the living saints to him in the air. We believe that Christ is coming back for his church, first and foremost. First Thessalonians, it says that the dead in Christ shall rise first and those that will remain to be caught up into heaven with them forever. And uh, he said he'll come as the sound of a trumpet of an archangel, the trumpet of God. And he said the dead in Christ shall rise first. We believe in that. We believe Christ is coming for his saints first and foremost. Then we believe that he's coming back, the second coming, if you will, to reign on the earth a thousand years. He's going to come back to this earth and set his feet on the Mount of Olives and split that thing and reign for a thousand years. We believe in that. 
We believe in the bodily resurrection of eternal life for the righteous and the eternal punishment for the wicked. We believe that we all one day will bodily stand before Christ and give an account of what we've done in this body, whether it be good or bad. We believe that if you've been washed by the blood and you've been and covered by the Son of, of, of God, that you're going to enter into heaven. There's going to be eternal reward, if you will, for the righteous, eternal life. And we also believe, basically what that's saying is, we believe there's a heaven and there's a hell. And we believe the righteous will go to heaven and the unrighteous will go to hell for eternity. That's what the Bible teaches. Jesus taught about it. Did you know Jesus taught more about hell than he did heaven, if you read the scriptures? He didn't. The main thing is, is because he don't want nobody to go there. So those are some sound doctrines, and those are some, that's the declaration of faith of the Church of God. Fourteen points, if you will, and uh, and and denominations are divided on grounds and lines of certain things in that matter. But there is some things I don't think you can waver off of. I, there is some things that uh, you can't move, be moved from, because there's such such a fundamental sound doctrine. Jesus. Asked the disciples one time, and I, I thought about this scripture. He said, who do men say that I am? And some of them say, well, some think you're Elijah, some think you're a prophet, some think you're, you know, uh, somebody else. I can't remember all of it. But he looked at them and he said, who do you think I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, on this rock, I'm going to build my church. Not the fact that Peter wasn't the rock, but it was the statement. It was the fact that he was the Christ, the son of the living God. That's the rock. And some things like that you cannot be moved on. Some things like that you cannot be moved on. The sound doctrine that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin, conceived of the Holy Ghost, the only begotten son of the Father died, buried, rose on the third day. And through all that, our sins can be washed away and forgiven. Jesus, Jesus himself said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. And I say it all the time, and I, I like what was brought up by a few people today, is that if you're sitting under somebody who's teaching contrary to the word of God, get yourself out of there. If you don't have influence in their lives to show them different, where you try to show them and they say, we don't believe that no more, then you need to find yourself another place to worship. I like what Sister Misty said because it can cause confusion in you and your family. So with all that being said this morning, denominations are a lot of man-made points and views. I understand that. And a lot of, a lot of how we interpret the scriptures sometimes. But the denomination will not keep you out of heaven. It will not put you in heaven. You can sign, you can, I hope you come to this church. And those that are watching, those that are here, I'm glad you're here and I'm glad your member's here. But because your name's on the membership roll at Mount Vale Church of God does not mean you're going to make it to heaven. The only way you're going to get to heaven is your sins have been forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. You believe on him and you've accepted him as Lord and Savior of your life and you've repented of your sins. That's the only way the Bible teaches you're going to make it to heaven. That's the only requirement, if you will, and we're to live holy lives before God. We're to live a sanctified life. But I think it's so very important that we understand that we got to have some sound doctrine. Some things you can't move off of. I'm hung up on this because I'm afraid we're living in a church in America where doctrines are being shifted and changed. I believe we're living in churches in America where where we once all stood together for a common cause and a common belief. Even though we may have little differences, we still stood upon some solid stuff. And now they're drifting away from it. Can I say this? If God called it a sin when he wrote the Bible or had the Bible written, it's still sin today. And we've got some churches who are wavering in America off these sound doctrines. For whatever reason, they are. And maybe it's, it's deception. Maybe it's because they don't read. Maybe it's because they don't get into the scriptures. Maybe it's because they're not. Maybe there's, it's because they're allowing the culture to influence them. But don't you understand something? If God said it, it's it. It don't change. He said, I, I, he said, he said, my word, he said, this heaven and earth will pass away. He said, but my word will last forever. I'm, I'm hung up on this for churches in America because I, I don't live in the other parts of the world, but I see it happening and I read it 
and I see articles and news articles and things in nature, and I'm thinking, my goodness, how could they have drifted so far? How could they have drifted so far? Because they're not standing upon something solid and sound, and they've allowed the world and the world system and the culture to dictate to them what is right and what is wrong. The Bible should be dictating to you what is right and what is wrong, not the government, not the politicians, not the uh, social media, not the, the mainstream media. The word is what dictates to you what's right or what's wrong. If God said it was a sin then, it's a sin now. If God said it was sound doctrine then, it's sound doctrine now. And, and that's why the word is so important. That little passage of scripture says it's for reproof, for, for, for doctrine, for reproof, correction. Sometimes we've got to be corrected. Sometimes we've got to be reproofed, if you will. But if the thing of the matter is, is it's leading us down the straight and narrow. It's telling us to a new place. Sister Lily wrote, even some church of gods have looked the other way at some things we used to preach against. Amen. Amen. That's true. That is true. And, and, and if we're not careful, and, and you know, we're not, none of us are, none churches are um, uh, what's it, exempt from falling down the wrong path if we don't stay in this word, if we don't stay in the scriptures, if we don't teach the right things. I come by to tell you today, teaching and preaching is not all about to make you feel good and pump you up, though it does sometimes, but it is for reproof and it is for correction. One old fellow said, if he's stepping on your toes, say, oh my, move up, come on. That's what the word's for. The word is to lead us. The word is to guide us. The word is to sanctify us. The word is to make us holy. It's to make us perfect, if you will. Not perfect like Christ was, but in itself, if you read verse 17 there, is we become more like Christ. That's, that's the goal of a Christian. To, a disciple of a Christian is to follow Christ and to become more like Christ. We have to be in the word and we have to adhere to the teachings of this word. You can't pick and choose. This is not golden corral. You can't say, well, I want this and I want that and I don't want that and I don't like that. It don't work like that. You're to take this word and rightly divide in it from the Old Testament to the New Testament and adhere to the teachings of the, of the word. Jesus said, you love me. He said, I know you love me when you follow my commandments. He said, I know you love me then. I don't know how I got off on that, but I think it's so very important that we, that we adhere to that and we learn from that. And we got to have some sound doctrine. And next week we may dive into this a little deeper. We may move into a different subject. I don't know. But the thing is, is I just want you to understand tonight, or this morning, excuse me, that you got to have some sound doctrine in your life. Whether you adhere to everything that the Church of God believes in, but there's some things in that declaration of faith you cannot move off of. Cannot move off of. Amen. If Christ did not rise from the dead, Paul said, then we, our faith is in vain. It's that simple. Our faith is in vain. So we got to believe in that. It's, it's sound doctrine. If not, I should have went fishing this morning. Just be real. I should go fishing tonight. Or watch TV or mow the yard, whatever. But tonight's church night. Tonight, I hope you find yourself in the church. Tonight, we're still in camp meeting revival. I hope you come visit us. If you're not having church at your church, come visit us. Come on, this is, God's been in the house. I'm expecting God to do more and more as this week progresses. The minister last week, last night, said that she really believed that there was a lot of miracles going to begin to take place throughout the rest of this week. I'm with her. I believe God can do anything and everything. But with all that being said, I'm going to wrap this thing up, I guess. But just remember, denominations won't get you into heaven and can't keep you out of heaven. But there is some sound doctrine that can. It's simple. I don't know what denomination you belong to and what, what, they, what their teachings are. But we will uh, maybe pick this. I don't know if, I don't know if we're going to, if, we, if, if this is good, if we need to delve deeper into this or not. But uh, if you think we do, give us a little post if you want us to, if we want to dig a little deeper in some of the declarations or, or we may move on to a different topic. So, but anyway, again, thank you guys so, so, so very much for being part of this class, making this thing happen. Hopefully it's been informative this morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, continue to remember our service tonight, camp meeting, our own state administrative bishop. Wayne Doherty's going to be here bringing the word. 
Man, we've been having some powerful worship and powerful preaching. And man, we just had some, just a, been a great move of God in the house this week. So let's remember that. Uh, remember uh, homecoming coming up August the 8th. Be eating dinner on the grounds. Bring the side dish, desserts, drinks, something like that. Also remember August the 14th is the, uh, is it Summer Inn Extravaganza? Is that what it's called? Sister Melissa, whatever it's called out there. But man, we're going to have car shows, hillbilly concessions, food, games, blow up for the kids. It's, it's just going to be a good fun time. Time of fellowship, getting to know each other. Uh, you can't register your car. This Sister Melissa posted, posted it on there. Uh, so, so let's remember all that. Amen. And let's, uh, man, I'm excited about tonight. I've been excited about camp meeting for a while. And we do it annual. This is our third annual camp meeting. And I'm telling you, it's just, uh, Lord's just moving. That's all I can say. He is, it's, it's sometimes, I say it this way, and I know I'm hillbilly and I can't help it, but sometimes that spirit's just thick in there. You know what I mean? It's thick. You can almost feel it. Almost look like you could cut it. Feel like you could cut it. It's just, such, God's just in the atmosphere so much. And in people's lives and moving and touching. I'm trying to make sure I ain't forgotten nothing looking around on my notes, but um, don't forget that tonight. Um, don't forget Thursday night again. I said Anthony Wynn's going to be here. Man, you ain't ever heard him. You don't want to miss him. Uh, Tommy Bates, if you've never heard him, and those probably a lot of you have, but you definitely don't want to miss him Friday night. Uh, it's a good thing about Friday nights. You ain't got to worry about going to work Saturday morning. Well, some people do, I guess, but uh, you stay up late. Uh, so I'm trying to make sure I haven't forgotten nothing. And if I have Sister Melissa, please post it. If you want to see check out our events, you can go to the Church Center app and check out our events. I say, we say it a lot, but if you don't have a church, please come check us out. We're at 1330 East Dumplin' Valley Road, Jefferson City, Tennessee. Uh, please come out and be part of it. And don't forget Jerry. He's, he's in touch with the Lord. Uh, i seen Donnie Moore come up on there. Don't forget his mama. She fell and broke a, I don't know what she, she broke a bone. I can't remember what, the leg, what it was she broke, but uh, please pray for her. She had to have surgery the other day on it, so remember her. Uh, so with all that being said, I think we're going to wrap this thing up. Thank you so much for being part of it. Thank you so much. Share, uh, watch party. I always, I always want to stress that because you guys are what make this happen and make this possible. We'll continue to run this as long as the Lord wants us to and as long as uh, it's impacting people and impacting lives. We get a lot of views afterwards. I know a lot of people work and things of that nature. So I, I, let me say this. If you view it afterwards, just put a little comment and say, hey, I watched it today and Enjoyed it, didn't enjoy it, uh, so whatever. But just let us know you're watching. Um, so anyway, I'm trying to run my mind to make sure I haven't forgotten. The sister Melissa, if I forgot something, put it on there for them, okay? Or Jerry won. Uh, so, but let's remember that. And again, thank you all for watching. Thank you for being part of it. And uh, thank God for all he's doing in our lives. And hey, hold on to some sound doctrine. Don't let nobody shake you off some things. you got to stand on that brought amen and uh, so anyway thank you again and may god bless you and we will see you next week